السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His household, his companions We ask Allah to bless them all To bless every one of us To grant us goodness And to have mercy on every one of us Amin my brothers and sisters, the Prophet Musa alayhi salam or Moses, may peace be upon him, called out to Allah many times during his life. Some of these are mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. Some of them are mentioned by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hadith. We went through one of the du'as or two of them when he had arrived in Median uh, in the previous episode. And today I'd like to go through another of the beautiful du'as of Musa alayhi salam, that is so powerful that every one of us actually needs throughout our lives. It is a dua mentioned in Surah Taha, a supplication mentioned in the chapter known as Taha in the Quran, verse number 25. Allah says, قَالَ رَبِّ اشْرَحْ لِي صَدْرِي وَيَسِّرْ لِي أَمْرِي وَحْلُ الْعُقْدَةً مِّن لِسَانِي يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي the term qala at the beginning in Arabic means he said. So if you were to use these words to call out to Allah with, you need to drop the qala. So it is Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yassirli amri wahlul uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli. What is the meaning of it? It means, O oh my Rabb, ishrahli sadri. You know, make clear for me my chest. So make clear for me my chest. Let me be confident. وَيَسِّرْلِي أَمْرِي And make my affair easy for me. وَحْلُ الْعُقْدَةً مِّن لِسَانِي And untie the knot on my uh, tongue. يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي So that they can understand what I say. My statement. What a powerful dua. It has got to do with anything that you're doing. You want the confidence? رَبِّ شْرَحْلِي صَدْرِي وَيَسِّرْلِي أَمْرِي you want Allah to make the affair easy? Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yassirli amri. You want to be eloquent, you want to be able to come across in a way that the people can understand what you're saying. Wahlul uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli. Oh Allah, untie the knot. Now, Musa alayhi salam had uh, literally a knot. It used to, uh, or it is reported that he had a stammer, a little bit of a stutter. And uh, he made a dua to Allah. Oh Allah, you are sending me to the Pharaoh. I need to talk to him. You are asking me to convey your message. I need your help because I stutter. My brothers and sisters, I want to draw your attention to something amazing. A miracle. In most cases of those who stutter, when they're reading the Quran, there's no stutter. It's just amazing. It's a miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In most cases, in some cases, it still happens. But those who struggle speaking sometimes and they happen to stammer, stutter, etc. They have a problem with, you know, uh, saying the first word, the first few words. When it comes to the Quran, they Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahmanir Rahim. You would never imagine that this person has a problem speaking. That's a gift of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it's the message of Allah, it's the words of Allah. Especially when you understand the Arabic language, but even for those who don't. So when you're speaking with the words of Allah, Allah makes it easier for you to convey the message because that message belongs to the owner of creation. Subhanallah. This is Musa alayhi salam. What did he say to Allah? Oh Allah, you're sending me to the Pharaoh. Well, I want you to, you know, clear my chest. And like I said, clearing the chest here would refer to many things, but it refers to confidence. It refers to something we all need. You know, I don't want to be nervous. I just want to have a clear chest. I know and so on. And I want you to make this affair easy for me. Affair meaning what you've tasked me with, the, this thing. I want you to make it easy for me. This dua, my brothers and sisters, you can apply it and use it in nearly everything that you are doing. You start off your lecture, you can read the dua. You want to start off something at work, you read the dua. You want to start off, you're speaking to someone, you read the dua. You have something to do, you read the dua. You have a task, you read the dua. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yassirli amri wa hlul uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli. And Allah gave that to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it to him. But 
there is another part of the dua that we may not call out to or we may not be calling out to Allah with because uh, we don't have a brother called Harun. <laughs> but I want to show you Musa alayhi salam who had a brother called Harun. By the way, I do have a brother called Harun, mashallah, tabarakallah. <laughs> but what I make mention of here is Allah, say, uh, Allah says that Musa alayhi salam called out to him even beyond that dua. He says, Waj'alli waziram min ahli. You know, let me have someone with me. Uh, from my family who can assist me. Uh, Harun Akhi, my brother Harun, send him with me. You know, you're asking me uh, to do something, but let me draw the help of my brother Harun. Uh, task him as well with me. Ushdud bihi azri wa ashriku fi amri. You know, uh, let him, uh, you, O oh Allah, strengthen me through him being with me and uh, let him come and take part in uh, this affair of mine so that we can both declare your greatness and glorify you and remember you a lot for indeed you are watching uh, what we are going through. And you know, after that, what Allah says, and this is something that brings tears to the eyes again. قَالَ قَدْ أُوْتِيْتَ سُؤْلَكَ يَا مُوسَىٰ وَلَقَدْ مَنَنَّا عَلَيْكَ مَرَّةً أُخْرَىٰ He says, O oh Musa, we have given you what you've asked. Amazing. This was almost instant. Where Musa alayhi salam is saying, Oh Allah, uh, open my, uh, my, my chest in the sense that, you know, clear my chest, make it easy for me, uh, untie the knot and send my brother with me so that we can uh, do this thing here together. And Allah says, okay, that's given. Anything else? Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Allah says, okay, that's given. Whatever you've asked for me, from me, I've given it to you. That's what Allah is saying. And Allah is saying, we have bestowed upon you favors. This is not the first favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon Musa alayhi salam. So Allah is saying, we've bestowed upon you the favors. How many favors have, have we bestowed upon you? Every one of us, we need to ask ourselves. The favors of Allah that he has bestowed upon us, what are they? How many are they? They are millions, billions, countless. It is part of faith and conviction to consider and to think about what Allah has given you and favored you with and to search for it, hunt it, find it and thank Allah for each thing. Uh, as many things as you can. That's a way that you will achieve increase because Allah says, If you are going to show gratitude to Allah, He will definitely grant you increase. So to show gratitude, search for the gifts, thank Allah for them, and you will see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do for you. So this was a beautiful dua that Musa alayhi salam made. When he went to the Pharaoh, he spoke so eloquently. I think the Pharaoh subhanallah was thrown off his feet. And this is why he felt threatened by Musa alayhi salam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all and guide us uh, in every single way. I want to go through more of the dua of Musa alayhi salam, this beautiful prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, he struggled also at the hands of his own people, the Banu Israel. So when it comes to Banu Israel, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that they uh, did not obey every instruction of Musa alayhi salam. They always cross-questioned him. They always asked him more and, and so on. Uh, but Musa alayhi salam sought the protection of Allah from the Pharaoh many times using different words. Some of these words specifically mention the Pharaoh, in which case we wouldn't be able to use that exact dua because it makes mention of the Pharaoh. But where the word Pharaoh is not in the verse or in the dua and it's a broader dua, we may use that dua, that supplication, if we have a similar situation where we need the protection from a tyrant, from someone who's bad, from someone who intends to harm us, listen to what Musa alayhi salam says. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about it in Surah Ghafir, verse number 27. And Moses said, Inni uzhtu, I seek the protection in my Rabb, in my Lord and your Lord. I seek the protection in our Lord, mine and yours. We have the same Lord, the same maker. I seek protection in Him from every 
arrogant person, haughty person who doesn't believe in the reckoning, the day of reckoning. So two qualities, a person who doesn't believe in the day of reckoning, but they're not haughty, they're not arrogant and so on. Uh, here, Musa is saying the one who doesn't believe and he is arrogant, he's proud, proud to the degree that he belittles everyone. He's harming us. He's causing damage. He's trying to cause damage. He's saying, I'm seeking the protection of my Lord and your Lord from uh, people who are arrogant and don't believe in the day. Don't believe in the day of accounting, the day of resurrection. So there's no harm in seeking this protection. In fact, it's healthy. This is a dua, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it for us such that we are protected from those who are arrogant, haughty, uh, you know, those who don't believe. In fact, subhanallah, there are other duas uh, that we will learn from the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when we get to those episodes where we will be covering the dua of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that's going to take up the largest chunk of our series, alhamdulillah. But I promise you there are so many powerful duas that we would feel that it was tailor-made for all of us because you see the tests of Allah are quite similar in the lives of everyone. The magnitude of the test might be different, but people are tested in a similar way. These are the same tests. You see, uh, I want to draw your attention to something very interesting. My beloved brothers and sisters, especially the younger ones. When we have examinations, O-levels, A-levels, you can, whatever other examinations in South Africa, they call it the matriculant exams, the metric exams, uh, whatever it is, people will tell you generally, if you want to pass, there is a secret. Oh, wow. So what's that secret? Past papers. Wow. Have you heard that? Past papers. Do as many past papers as you can of geography. Get them from the year 2000 right up to 2018. 18 past papers, 2019, 2020, whatever the year is. Do 20 past papers and June and November, June and November in the case of O levels, okay? Or A levels. They'll tell you do past papers. You'll never go wrong. And then you're, you, you know what? When you've done all those past papers, the chances are as you're sitting with your examination, oh, wow, there's a small change in the question but it's appeared somewhere because those examiners need to ask you about a specific syllabus right that syllabus is contained right so the questions they're going to ask you if you've covered the, the, so many years of past papers you've covered the syllabus and it might be a slight difference in wording a small difference in angle if it's mathematics difference in the numbers but the gist of the question is the same and you say wow i did this just now this morning i did it and you're happy smiling you know the examiner the invigilator might think you're cheating can i tell you the example i'm giving you with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has given us all the past papers we need to pass our exam. These are past papers. He's telling us about the prophets. He says, look, they had issues. They had problems. This is how they dealt with them. Your problems are smaller than theirs. Do you have the time to go through these past papers? If you do, good luck to you. You're going to pass them. If you don't, bad luck. You're going to struggle. You might fail, come back to repeat your exam. You fail again, come back to repeat your exam until you've done enough papers that are current that you wrote and failed and you got the experience and you came back. This is a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, it's a beautiful way of looking at things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows favor upon us by telling us what happened to others. And this is why the hadith of the Prophet he always speaks about how important it is to look at those who have less than you so that you can appreciate what you have. Uh, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam is seeking the protection in Allah from the, the pride and the haughtiness of those who are haughty and the wrongdoers, etc, etc. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, gave that to him. Now, there is another dua that Musa alayhi salatu wasalam uh, has made. Uh, and this dua is to do with the seeking of forgiveness for himself and his people. Where he says, "Anta waliyuna faghfir lana warhamna wa anta khayyul ghafirin." Surah Al-A'raf, verse number one fifty-five. He says, "O oh Allah, you are our protector, so forgive us and have mercy on us, for you are the best of those who forgive. You are the best of those who forgive." So he's seeking the forgiveness of Allah. We also need to seek the forgiveness of Allah. In another verse, Allah says. 
that Musa alayhi salam said, رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي وَلِأَخِي وَأَدْخِلْنَا فِي رَحْمَتِكْ وَأَنْتَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّاحِمِينَ Verse number 151 of Surah Al-A'raf. O oh my Rabb, forgive me and my brother and enter us into your mercy for indeed you are the most merciful of those who have mercy. أَرْحَمْ الرَّاحِمِينَ أَنْتَ خَيْرُ الْغَافِرِينَ you are the best of those who forgives. Look at how one is, Allah is forgiving. That's his quality, right? His names are based also on forgiveness. But to say you are the best of those who have mercy, you are the most merciful of those who have mercy, you are the best of those who forgive. These are qualities. They praise Allah. We all have to praise Allah. Oh Allah, you are the best. There is no one, no one better than you. Oh Allah, there are people who forgive. You are the best. You are the most forgiving of those who forgive. You are the most merciful of those who have mercy. Have mercy on me. Oh Allah, have mercy on me and my brother. So what, what lesson I want to draw from this is, look, he's asking not just for himself. In one dua, he says, اغفر لي ولأخي, Forgive me and my brother. Let's make dua for our family members. In, an, in this other verse, he says, uh, Oh Allah, forgive me and my people. Forgive all of us. It's not just me. So this goes to show that, you know, we're concerned about the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not just for us, but for all those around us. And this is why Allah says, Musa alayhi salam continues, he says, وَاكْتُبْ لَنَا فِي هَذِهِ الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ إِنَّا هُدْنَا إِلَيْكِ The dua is as follows, وَاكْتُبْ لَنَا فِي هَذِهِ الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ O Allah, write for us goodness in this world and the next. That's the dua. وَاكْتُبْ لَنَا فِي هَذِهِ الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ O oh Allah, write for us, decree for us goodness in this world and the next. The dua stops there. Inna hudna ilayka is separate from the dua. So this is an amazing wording because it was thousands of years prior to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the man is making the same dua that is mentioned in the Quran and it's something we are asked to call out to Allah with. And I'm mentioning that in a moment. But... It means, O oh Allah, we want two goodnesses in this world and in the next. I believe that there is another world to come. So I don't want you to solve my problems only for this world, but I want you to resolve my matters for this world and for the next. Both of them. This dua is powerful because it shows that you believe in the hereafter. It shows that you're concerned about the hereafter. So now let's fast forward to Muhammad sallallahu time. Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about it, verse number 200 and 201, where he says, He's speaking about Hajj and the people who make dua in Muzdalifa and the people who are making dua during the season of Hajj. And he, he says, these people are saying, or from among the people, there are those who say, Oh Allah, grant us in the dunya, in this world, and they have no portion of the hereafter. Nothing. So they forget to ask about the hereafter. The supplications from Revelation teach us that we should not just be asking about goodness of this world and then leave no portion for the hereafter, but to balance the two. Be conscious always of the fact that while you're asking Allah for some goodness here, you need to ask Him for goodness of the hereafter as well. So Allah says, from among the people there are some, they don't know what they're doing. They're only asking Allah, Oh Allah, help me, give me a job, grant me a spouse, give me wealth, give me health, give me good offspring, give me a, a, a beautiful house, a beautiful car, a beautiful this, a beautiful that, grant me, uh, you know, whatever else in terms of the world. And they forget to say, Oh Allah, forgive me, grant me paradise, make it easy for me in my grave, and so on. So the very next verse, Allah speaks about the ideal. Allah says, <clears throat> 
ومنهم من يقول ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار أولئك لهم نصيب مما كسبوا والله سريع الحساب From among the people are those who say O oh, our Rabb, grant us goodness in this world and the next and save us from the uh, punishment of the grave. وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ Save us from the punishment of the grave. Allah says, those are the ones who will achieve a portion of what they have earned. So this is a beautiful dua. Why? It's divided into three. Two of them regarding the hereafter and the one portion regarding this world. Subhanallah. If you're dividing this dua into three, رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنًا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ O oh Allah, grant us goodness in this world, grant us goodness in the hereafter, and save us from the punishment of the grave. You would realize these two are connected to the hereafter. And this one here is connected to this world. It goes to show that true believers are more concerned about the hereafter than they are about this particular worldly life. So I would like Jannah, you would like Jannah, we would all like paradise. But in the interim, we need a few things here. We will endure. The richest of people have problems. The poorest of people have problems. The, the, the most handsome and pretty of people have problems. Uh, the most healthy of people have problems. These issues shall remain when you get to the hereafter. No more problems. Why? You believed, you, you sought Allah, you uh, did the right thing, and you entered Allah's mercy. But if you did not do the right thing in this world, then the problems will begin in the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep, a beautiful understanding. This is why this dua has brought together so much of goodness. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ You know when we go to Mecca to Al-Mukarramah and we're doing the tawaf of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's a sunnah at a certain stage between uh, the, the, uh, the Rukn Yamani and the Hajar Aswad, which is the last part. You see the Kaaba is like a box, right? Slightly rectangular. Some say it's exactly square, but it's not exactly square. Uh, it, it, it's shape, okay? The, the last part of it as you're circumambulating, the sunnah is رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ O oh Allah, grant us goodness in this world, grant us goodness in the hereafter, and save us from the punishment of the grave. The punishment of the grave, if you're saved from it, what is to follow is going to be easier and lighter. If you're not saved from it, what is to follow is going to be worse. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grant us uh, savior from the punishment of the hereafter. So today what we learned is we don't just pray for ourselves, we pray for others as well. Uh, we always look at the qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we call him with the best of those names. You know, he is the best of those who have mercy, etc, etc. And also when we call out to Allah, don't just call out uh, for this world, but call out for the hereafter as well. Here is Musa alayhi salatu was salam. Imagine, he called out to Allah using similar words as Muhammad وسلم, later on. Similar words as those that Allah tells us to use during the period of Hajj. And not just during the period of Hajj, but these duas should be with us every single day. It's amazing how some of the Imams actually say, even in Tashahud, when we're sitting and you know we're finished with our salawat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's a time to make dua. We say, Allahumma inni zalamtu nafsi dhulman kathira. Oh Allah, I have wronged myself in a great way. Wala yaghfiru dhunuba illa ant. And none forgives sins besides you. Faghfirli maghfiratan min indik. So forgive me a forgiveness from yourself. Warhamni innaka anta al rahim And have mercy on me, for indeed you are the most forgiving, most merciful. Some of the scholars actually say, you can add to that, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa qina adhab al nar And some say you can actually replace it with that. All of that is beautiful because they're all dua taught to us by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And these are dua seeking forgiveness, seeking help. Uh, when you seek forgiveness, automatically you are asking for a good hereafter. 
Uh, so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless every one of us. My brothers and sisters, I'm excited about uh, the next episode by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're going to go through these supplications from revelation in order for us to all benefit. Until then, aqulu qawli hadha. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.